Um, on the question of quantitative versus qualitative, um, uh, I think my position on that really only began to change um, uh, during the time in Cambridge. I mean, the Affluent Worker project, I mean, wasn't especially quantitative. I mean, it was designed as a critical case uh, study. And OK, uh, we took uh, samples and uh, we had some um, uh, tables, but I mean, apart from the odd significance test, uh, that uh, there, there was no multivariate analysis uh, in it at all. And um, I did, though, start then, um, this is the first time I got sort of academically interested in social mobility as such. Um, I mean, with glass, it was more a way of seeing how, as it were, quantitative thinking could fit into sociology and it just happened that the subject was social okay. mobility. And then I became aware that uh, I did need to uh, uh, improve my statistical knowledge because by that time um, you had people like uh, Otis Dudley Duncan in the States uh, uh, using uh, regression uh, approaches to social mobility and then developing these into causal path analysis and so on. So um, I become more aware there of, of how relatively advanced statistical techniques could have major sociological uh, potential. Um, and then um, I guess what further um, changed my view was by the end of the 60s one had well Britain and, and elsewhere this so-called reaction against positivism and then the attacks on quantitative methods and I th thought and I still think that was the big disaster in yeah. British sociology and I really didn't have much sympathy or very much patience to be honest with the various alternatives that were floated around. I mean, ranging from phenomenology and ethnomethodology at one extreme to weird forms of structuralist Marxism, Althusser et al. at the other. I thought that was going nowhere. 